In this video, we're just going to show our newest uh, MOSFET multifunction uh, unit. This has pilot off four. It also has an auto sensing for the uh, foot control and the, uh, the uh, TIG torch. So if you use the TIG torch by hand or the foot control, there's no remote or panel access that you have to uh, function. Uh, it will just sense it itself and uh, set it up the correct way. I want to show the difference between a pilot off and a HF start. A HF start needs to have a scratch start. It needs to be in contact with the material cutting to initiate your arc. A pilot arc, that's not necessary. In addition to that, regardless of whether it's a HF start or a pilot arc start, you should keep the contact point, the tip, about an eighth of an inch about the material that you're cutting. That can be difficult with the HF start. You have to have a very steady hand to be able to run along uh, one eighth above the material that you're cutting. Uh, most people just drag it along. This reduces the lifespan of the uh, consumables or electrodes and tips. With this here, you keep it a constant distance every time and you'll find that your consumables last far longer than uh, with the HF. Now, we're going to show exactly what it is. If this were a HF start and I squeeze the trigger, I'd have airflow, but that's all I'd have. I'd have to touch the material in question to initiate the arc. With pilot arc, we don't have that issue. It's as simple as that. We're just going to flip over here, and we're just going to cut piece of material just to show what we're talking about. I'm just going to have to swing this camera over, go with me, and I think we're basically where we want to be. Just going to zoom it in a touch. Okay, that should do for this thing here. I'm only going to move on a little bit here because I really like to do a little bit of the uh, tip function. I'm just going to use a straight edge here. And we're initiating our cut. see this, but there's our cut, uh, this is quarter inch stop. Now we're going to re quickly swing over and try and get the TIG working. I'm not going to get the TIG work trying. Uh, we're going to try and get the TIG weld in a timely manner. Let's put it that way. I have the foot pedal set up. We're basically ready to go. There's our TIG torch. I'm just going to bring this up here. That's our foot control that we're using. We've got it hooked up to the uh, to our multifunction machine. And I'm just going to reposition the camera. And we're going to try and zoom in a little bit on this one eighth uh, plate that we've got here. And oh, bear in mind, I don't take well. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to basically get rid of these. I'm in a rush here because of the time frame for the video, but uh, here it goes. Now I'm going to step on the pedal, and you'll see that we have a heat that's start on this. Okay, I'll just put a little tack weld on there. That's just to hold things together for us. 
I can adjust the amperage using the foot control and I can judge it by my puddle. This is a very steady arc on this machine. If you knew how to tip well, you'd have fun. I don't know how to tip well. So here it goes. I'm stepping down a little bit more to get a little bit more amperage to get my puddle started. There we go. And I'm just using the filler rod and I'm controlling my puddle, the amperage, just keeping it the way I hopefully want it. As I feed it along, I just use and add the filler into my well. Just making tiny circles. And I'm just backing off the heat a little bit. And there we have our TIG well. Again, keep in mind I cannot TIG well. So using this uh, 520 does a very decent job for me. I'm going to try and get a little bit closer and focus it in. That's not being very good for me. Like I said, I can't TIG weld, but that gives you an idea. I think I maybe had a little bit too much heat in that, but uh, hmm, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's just basically two of the functions on the multi